<clears throat> yeah, well, thank you for inviting me, and excuse me for uh, talking some sort of English and not Icelandic. I'm able to read a bit Icelandic, but unfortunately I'm definitely not able to talk it. So, if you excuse me, I will do this lecture in uh, sort of English. I'm going to talk about uh, terrorists and mass murderer uh, Anders Bering Breivik and his ideological and political views. As you may know, uh, Breivik published uh, his uh, manifesto on the internet just before he committed his terrorist act on July 22nd last year. This manifesto is, uh, uh, well, what shall we call it, a rambling affair, a compilation, very much cut and paste. Um, it's 1,500 pages long and uh, not many people have read it or will read it. And one may ask, uh, well, what's the point in uh, uh, reading it or, or uh, discussing it? Well, in this uh, manifesto he gives his ideological argument for his terrorist act. He's definitely not a great political thinker, but still I would say it's uh, necessary to take it and his views seriously. Why? Well, mainly because of the impact the potential and actual impact this manifesto will have. Breivik is already and will be a cult figure, a hero, worshipped as an ideological leader by all sorts of right-wing extremists, if you like right-wing nuts and wackos all over the world. Today and in the foreseeable future. Uh, if we take a look at the ideas he is expressing in this manifesto, some of them are very obvious and well known, and I will address them very briefly. The most obvious, of course, well, that's his main enemies. His enemies, on the one hand, we find uh, Islam and Muslims. On the other hand, uh, the political and cultural elite of Western Europe. Uh, this elite he calls uh, multiculturalists or cultural Marxists. Uh, in his manifesto, there is also a very strong conspiracy theory well known, and I will not dwell much with that either, uh, a theory usually called the Eurabia theory. Uh, it says that uh, this uh, Western Europe cultural Marxist elite and the elite in uh, Arab countries are plotting to Islamize Western Europe to destroy the traditional values and institutions in Western Europe, mainly by mass emigration of Muslims into Europe and especially Western Europe. These um, are 
very well known points. And of course, uh, these points of view, they don't make Breivik a totalitarian thinker, not at all. But there is more in his manifesto. There is much more. And I will talk about that. Breivik is a full-fledged revolutionary. He wants a violent struggle. He wants to create a new society and a new world. And uh, these views, these views are definitely totalitarian. Let me first say something about the concept of totalitarianism. Uh, by totalitarianism, well, we often think about Holocaust and Gulag, Hitler and Stalin. We think about the super repressive regimes like the one in Orwell's 1984. About total mind control and surveillance uh, state repression and uh, large scale statist terror and genocide. And of course, totalitarianism, well, it's all this. But it's important to remember that all totalitarian regimes are based upon ideas and movements carrying these ideas. And if we look at totalitarian ideas, we may ask, well, what makes a totalitarian ideology totalitarian exactly? What is the ideological common ground between deadly enemies like on the one hand fascism and Nazism, on the other hand communism? And I will also add some at least forms of modern Islamism. What is the common ground on an ID plane? between all these separate ideologies. Well, here is a suggestion. Some points that I will argue constitute what I will call a totalitarian mindset. First and foremost, all totalitarian movements, and as, sorry, um, movements as carriers of totalitarian ideologies, they claim they have found the recipe for the perfect society. They want to create a new society, a new world with a new man. This is the main goal for all of them. They reject a present society, its values and its institutions, totally and aggressively. Uh, they claim that uh, well, all present societies, and well, for various reasons, especially the liberal democratic Western societies, are doomed. They are being destroyed. They often have what we can call apocalyptic visions of doom and destruction. Further on, they will have a total a clean break with present society. They claim a break like that is necessary. They reject all sorts 
or reformist strategies. They want a revolutionary struggle, if necessary, a violent revolt and a full-scale civil war. Uh, they claim that they have found the one big and only solution, the one single truth uh, about everything, about society, history, politics, human life, you name it. The solution to all problems, truth about everything. Totalitarian movements, they are principally anti-pluralistic. And their solutions contain everything then. They are holistic in this way. And therefore, they want to control everything. They want to control and regulate all aspects of human life. They also claim that uh, politics, for instance, political ideas, uh, well, they cannot be limited to a single sphere, a single part of society or human life. Everything is related, interconnected for them, and everything must be controlled and regulated. Further on, they claim that this ideological insight is at least uh, in an early phase reserved for a chosen elite, namely the totalitarian movements and thinkers themselves. According to them, most people, they have a false consciousness. They don't realize the real problems and the real mechanisms and solutions. They must be led by the elite. And this is maybe the most important point. They claim that they have the moral right to use all necessary means to realize their goal. If necessary, an expedient, violence, terror, mass murder, their big vision, their goal, their end is so great and so glorious that uh, all other considerations, well, ideological, moral, or otherwise, are trapped. Human life, for instance, or 77 human lives, or 1,000, or a million, or several millions even. Well, all this is fully expendable. And in the large scheme of things, have less or no value in this consideration. And finally, everyone and everything who are resisting this uh, solution, this strategy for creating the perfect society, the new world, must be considered as enemies, and neutralized or destroyed, eliminated if necessary. In short, the stakes, as you can see, for the totalitarian thinker is as high as possible. On the one hand, a doomed and this destroyed society, an apocalyptic vision. On the other hand, a perfect new world, a perfect society. Well, with stakes such as these, they may do everything. 
And in short, as short as I can be, they want to play God. If we now take a look at Breivik's ideas, we do indeed find a totalitarian mindset in his manifesto. We find apocalyptic visions. Uh, he thinks and feels that Western Europe is doomed and that uh, present rulers and institutions in Norway and in Western Europe, well, are destroying its own people. On the other hand, we find what Breivik himself called a pursuit for perfection. He has indeed found the recipe for a perfect society. We also find the need for a revolution, for a violent struggle against the present democratic system, and visions of a future full-scale civil war. We find that uh, Breivik claims the right, in a moral sense, to do everything necessary. Uh, if you think about his uh, mass murder on July 22nd, quotes like this is grotesque and chilling. And I quote from his manifesto, there are situations in which cruelty is necessary and refusing to apply necessary cruelty is a betrayal of the people whom you wish to protect. And he also writes about this moral right to cruel acts, I quote, in many ways, morality has lost its meaning in our struggle. The question of good and evil is reduced to one simple choice. For every free patriotic European, only one choice remains, survive or perish. In this scheme, his enemies they must be destroyed, eliminated by all sorts of means. Breivik, like totalitarian thinkers before him, he wants to play God. So, but what sort of totalitarian ideas are we talking about? What sort of society will Breivik have in his new world? What sort of political thinker is he really? Well, that's an interesting question, I would say. And uh, not easy to answer right away. But I will try to point out some of his main political views and visions. So, he is, at least in his uh, manifesto, not a neo-Nazi. He uh, is very friendly towards Israel and the plight of the Jews. He is uh, hostile to classical national socialism in this manifesto. He is, or uh, rather he was, a free mason. 
And all this, of course, uh, makes him something other than a neo-Nazi and real neo-Nazis, well, they considered him as a Jew-loving free Mason enemy from day one. Although in the recent trial he seems to have changed his views a bit and spoke a lot more friendly about neo-Nazi terrorist groups and also about uh, classic traditional Nazi ideologies and values. So, Breivik isn't a nationalist in a classical sense either, even if he calls himself a nationalist. His main frame of reference is not Norway or Norwegian national values. It is Europe and Europe's culture, history, and civilization. He is, as I'm sure you know, looking very much backwards for inspiration. Most obvious uh, is this uh, fascination for the Knight Templars. And he uh, tries to express himself in modern crusader terms and uh, dresses himself up as a, some sort of modern Knight Templar with all sorts of paraphernalia and all sorts of uh, well, Templar obscurantist mumbo jumbo. He is using history, very selective and with very dubious interpretations of uh, well, on the, the Islamic threat to the Christian European civilization and the 1500 year war between an Islamic bloc and a European Christian bloc. This is uh, what we can call a cultural construction and he is using this construct of the past as an inspiration for a new Europe. For that's important, I think he wants to create a fundamentally new Europe, a new world. And his recipe for the perfect society is as follows. He wants a new strong European federation, some sort of super EU. Purified and cleansed and monocultural. In this new Europe, there will be no Muslims and no Islamic influence. The Muslims in Europe will be deported or executed. There will be no Marxists or Marxist influence either. No cultural Marxists, and that's a very broad concept for Breivik. They will be killed, liquidated without mercy. All of them, according to Breivik. There will be no feminism, no loose morals. Uh, he is uh, rather traditional in this moral sense and uh, is, uh, to put it mildly, very critical towards uh, modern liberal Western sexual morals and values. What about uh, what he called extreme liberals then? 
will their fate be in this new world? Well, he has a special solution for them. They will not be killed like the cultural Marxists. They will be placed in ghettos in some chosen big cities around Europe where they can live out their liberal fantasies and morals. But they will not be allowed to influence the society at large. They can use their drugs and they can have all sorts of uh, sex they want and whatever they think about inside the ghetto walls, but not outside of them. In this new Europe, Breivik will have a new church as a main institution. A traditionalist church, unified uh, and a strong church ruled by what he calls a crusader pope. His revolutionary elite society, the modern Knight Templars, well, they will still be a revolutionary elite in the new Europe after the revolution has succeeded. They will be a leading political institution in his new authoritarian political structure. This structure, this new political system he will create, will be an authoritarian political system, a limited political democracy within very strict borders. And on the top of the political pyramid, as the deciding ruling institution, there will be what he calls a conservative guardian council. As he phrases it, permanent political principles will be laid down Opinions will be controlled and sorted out. Unwanted opinions will be forbidden. Unwanted ideologies will for be forbidden, and so on. And the Guardian Council and the Knight Templars will see to this. Well, this is a fantasy, of course. So uh, this is social engineering on a grand scale. But still, this is the ideological reasoning behind the terrorist act of July 22nd. Breivik wanted to trig uh, violent uprising in Norway and in Western Europe with his terrorist act. And he has a uh, well, 60, 70 year perspective of the European full scale civil war and the victory and the building of the new Europe, the new society. What should we call Breivik in an ideological sense then? These ideas, well, what sort of ideas are they? Well, uh, as I said, it, it isn't easy to find a fitting classical category. There are similarities uh, with some strands of neo-fascist thinking in Europe. There are some ideological links 
to thinkers like uh, the Italian Julius Evola, the French New Wright and its uh, ideologue Alain de Benoit, and also the German conservative revolutionary Armin Moller. Although Breivik has certainly never read a single word by any of these writers. And of course, none of these writers have uh, the slightest responsibility for Breivik and his terrorism. Still, if we are looking for uh, a place to put him, I would say, well, yeah, some sort of uh, neo-fascist, maybe. But let me say one other thing before I finish. We can also find links to other sort of uh, totalitarian ideas. Consider this. Uh, a society and a political system where permanent principles are laid down concerning what is allowed and uh, what is forbidden. An institutionalized religion dominating and permeating the whole society. An idealized past and traditional values in a new modern context. A patriarchal, very hierarchical society. A strong aversion against Western sexual morals, feminism and decadence. Merciless purges of all sorts of opposition, of dissenters. A parliament with a very restricted power. A conservative guardian council as the supreme ruling force and the guarantee for the political system and the social order at large. Well, these are Breivik's solutions. And if we look around in the world today, where do we find a regime like this? Well, one place, if you ask me. In Ayatollah Khomeini's Islamist regime in Iran. There you can find Breivik's ideas in an abstract form, realist. This does not make Breivik an Islamist, of course. But it is an indication that there are some ideological common ground between him and some of his mortal enemies. Just like it was between the mortal enemies and the totalitarian dictators Hitler and Stalin. Thank you. <laughs>